Despite the sea of negative critiques, I ventured into the world of Madam Web with an open mind, hoping to uncover the hidden gems that critics might have missed. Here's my take on whether or not this controversial movie deserves a second chance. Hey Splashers, today we're diving into the much debated Madam Web movie that's been stirring up quite a bit of controversy. So let's swing into the details and see if it's worth your time. First off, Madam Web takes an interesting approach by giving us a teenage high school vibe. It's a departure from the usual superhero fare and I was curious to see how it would play out. But here's where things start to unravel. Unlike your typical superhero movie, our lead never dons a suit. That's right, no iconic costume, no web slinging action. Instead, she's armed with psychic powers, which while interesting, left me craving for some classic superhero flair. Not having the main character put on a suit as the superhero when the whole premise of this movie is Madam Web and she's supposed to be like a female Spider-Man. Not seeing Madam Web put on a suit throughout the whole movie movie is just wild to me because this is supposed to be like a female version of Spider-Man, but none of that ever happens. In the beginning of the film, her mom ends up getting shot by her partner when they're in search of this spider that can heal people. And he ends up taking the spider and she ends up being saved by the people in Peru that are of this La Aranya tribe that are able to come and get her. She gets carried away, taken to a cave and they realize that she's pregnant. So they try to save her and the daughter, which is Madam Webb. By the time that they allow the spider to bite her to be able to try to heal her body, she ends up passing away and the daughter survives. From there, we would think that she gains some powers. We see how these powers works, things like that. And that she would wear some type a superhero costume we never get that superhero costume she ends up being a woman that learns how to become a psychic similar to something off of that so raven if you've ever watched that show or any other show that predicts things and things can happen so she ends up having these visions back and forth of ways that she sees something unfold which is actually things that are happening in the future so she sees them a few different times and at first she doesn't understand what she's seeing or why overall these visions don't don't add up well enough to make you want to stay engaged with this film. The only times you ever see anybody in costumes is when she has these visions. Then there are the three teenage girls. They're there, but why? Their presence feels more like filler than the integral part of the story. It's a missed opportunity to add depth to the plot or to the character dynamics. So you have these three young girls that she ends up saving in the train station because Ezekiel, the guy that was the mom's partner, ends up having these powers from the spider because he allowed his spider to bite him that he stole. And from there, those powers show him visions, but he actually has other powers besides the visions. Once he sees these visions, he keeps seeing the three girls that come and attack him and eventually kill him. So he keeps seeing this dream over and over and over again. So he's believing that they're the ones that are gonna end his life. The whole mission for him is to try and kidnap those three girls and put an end to their lives. So the whole story revolves around Madam Webb trying to keep these girls safe from Ezekiel. And at the same time, she's trying to keep them safe but she doesn't have any powers except for psychic powers so they can't fight the gentleman none of the girls have any powers whatsoever but somehow when she has her visions and her premonitions and he has his visions he can see the girls dressed up in costumes as web characters and it just doesn't make sense that they don't ever actually wear their costumes during the film to be able to find out what powers they actually have how did they get their powers did they go to peru and get one of the spiders to bite them so that they can get the powers we don't know at all this movie is very disjointed as far as how it delivers the message it wants to deliver to you about madam webb you don't see her in action you see her more so as a babysitter and dakota johnson who plays madam webb you see her as an emt when the film opens up she starts to learn that she has these premonitions her mother is gone she had no one tell her about these powers that she has and she's lived all the way till her adult life and now she's trying to figure out what these powers are and she has the gift to be able to see different things happening before they actually unfold eventually she learns how to be able to be in multiple places at one time it just never Never seems strong enough. She just doesn't ever seem like she fully grasps her powers, and we don't know what is gonna come from this. There's no real ties to any other parts of this. And the craziness is this is supposed to be part of the Spider-Man universe. There's no Spider-Man in the movie. There's nothing that tells us how Spider-Man will tie into this movie. It just doesn't make a lot of sense. 
And if you're one of those who stay glued to your seat for mid or post credit scenes, prepare for disappointment. There's nothing waiting for you at the end of this web. Now let's talk about the villain, Ezekiel. His suit is basically a knockoff Spider-Man look. It looks like they weren't even trying to hide the lack of originality in the design. It's a letdown to say the least. Other than the fact that Ezekiel doesn't want to be killed and he keeps seeing this dream, we really don't have any backstory on him besides the fact that him and the mom used to be partners a long time ago and and they were working to find this special spider and he had been waiting years to find the spider. There's no other attachment to him. He's wealthy, he's a spider guy, man, something, I don't know. This movie was very disappointing in the way that it was done. I don't understand how this is gonna tie into any of the Spider-Mans and which variation of Spider-Man is this movie gonna be part of his legacy. And finally, our Madam Web, in a twist that feels all too familiar, she ends up losing her eyesight and ends up in a wheelchair. It was very, very reminiscent of Professor X. It just feels like a narrative choice that was recycled and uninspired. Now all of a sudden she lost her vision. Her senses are heightened, so she actually can see, but is blindfolded. And then she's in like a floating type of wheelchair and it rolls like toward a window in the end of the movie. It does nothing for me. I was very, very, very disappointed in this being one of the films. And this is one of Sony's worst rated films. And the craziness is too, the writers of this film already had a bad track record in their previous movies. And this is the type of film that they decided to bring out to try to recycle and reuse the Spider-Verse, but it's not working. Sony, please just give Spider-Man back to Marvel. They do a lot better job with him. His world will be better with Marvel. Matt Sazama and Burke Sharpless already had a bad track record of their screenplays. And now Madam Web is one of the worst ranked films as well. So if we look through their track record, they had Dracula Untold, they had The Last Witch Hunter, they had Madam Web, Morbius, and Gods of Egypt. The highest rating they got out of those five movies is 25%, and Madam Web is at 17% when it comes to Rotten Tomatoes. What were you thinking? Sony, why would you put this together for this movie that I'm assuming you guys spent millions and millions and millions of dollars on hoping to you know spark something with the spider-verse and now you have another flop on your hand madam web ends up being filmed in 2003 we had to kind of piece together what spider-man is going to fit into this timeline and how he's going to fit into this timeline and it seems like it would be the adam garfield version of spider-man that would line up with this one but who knows uncle ben parker which is an emt with madam web is actually young in this film so him being a younger person you can kind of rule out which spider-mans he probably would not be tied to based on the years and the timelines of those Spider-Mans. Out of all the films that are spider related, Venom had the highest rating. And I actually feel that one has an unfair rating because it was ranked at 57% on Rotten Tomatoes, which I think it was a better film than that. And then Venom, oh, actually that was Venom Let There Be Carnage was ranked at 57%. The regular Venom film is ranked at 30%. And then Madam Web came in at 18% and Morbius at 15%. So having these films not even do that well, they gotta find a better way to tie the spider verse together especially if you plan on making it like some type of avengers movie where all of these characters are going to eventually come together and you know team up against crime and things like that i was excited to see mike epps in this film but his role didn't last long and he didn't really have any comedic relief or anything in there except for being on a barbecue grill i really have to think deeply to try and find something positive that I want to say about this movie because the cinematography wasn't great. Being shot in 2003, nothing there. It just really, it, it had no glue to it. I didn't feel like I needed to watch this film. I was very disappointed sitting there watching it because as we know, there wasn't a lot to, to stick with. Madam Webb was being a glorified babysitter she had the three girls that eventually are gonna get powers. They had some cool suits when we looked at the little dreams or the premonitions or the future psych, I don't know, the future psychic views and whatever else was happening, but we don't know where the tech came from. Also, all three of the girls have parents that don't care about them or aren't around. So that kind of ties into how Madam Web is gonna become like their, I guess, trainer and teach them how to fight and take care of themselves and help them gain the powers. This film was lacking any major fights because the girls and Madam Web all couldn't fight. 
So each time we're thinking that there might be a great action scene with Ezekiel and him in his spider suits and possibly these women in their spider suits, no, it doesn't happen. The women run, figure out ways to strategize getting away from him by listening to Madam Webb's future views and things like that. But it was a waste. There was no action scene. How do you fight this guy when you have no powers besides seeing the future? So yeah, she was like calling out to them and figuring out ways to get them to dodge the guy and getting out of buildings before he arrived and things like that. But also when you have the final fight, Madam Webb's basically like a cheerleading coach. She's standing up on this side of a billboard and she's yelling to the girls over fire and sparks and different things flying around, telling them instructions of how to avoid his attacks. But realistically, how the heck are they gonna hear her trying to yell to them when they're facing this guy who's trying to kill them and there's a lot of noise in the background with flares going off and things breaking off the building and all of that craziness but they're gonna hear her instructions of how to not get killed. Doesn't work, it's, it's not good. I hate to say it because I usually like to put a positive spin on my reviews in some way, shape or form, but this movie was hot garbage, hot garbage. Everyone that's gonna go watch uh, Girl Spider-Man tomorrow, um, stay home, save your money. Um, as a matter of fact, use that money to go buy your girl or guy something nice from the dollar store. Happy Valentine's Day. Not a one thing that I like about this film, and that's crazy. I give this a F. This is a capital F. Not a good film. I don't recommend you wasting your money and going to the theaters to watch this. If you do decide to watch it because you like Spider-Man's Spider-Verse that much, watch it from home whenever it comes out on whatever streaming platform because you will be wasting your time, your energy, your money, everything watching this film. It's not good. Let me know what you think about Madam Web in the comments. I would love to hear your feedback, your thoughts on this film. And if there's something that I missed or something you felt that actually was good in this film, let me know because I would love to discuss it with you. Catch you guys on the next one. Hey Splashers, thanks for tuning in today and I appreciate you watching this review of Madam Web because I doubt you're gonna actually watch the film. This will be the only thing you need to hear, see, listen to about this film because that's it. <laughs> like, comment, subscribe, stay tuned for my next reviews and go ahead and watch any reviews that you haven't watched thus far.